Michael Cohn is the former personal attorney to Donald Trump. In August of 2018, he pleaded guilty to eight federal charges, including campaign finance violations related to hush money payments he made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels during the 2016 election. He also cooperated with the Manhattan District Attorney, the very office that has convened that special grand jury against the Trump org. After spending more than a year in prison, he wrote a memoir about his work for Donald Trump titled Disloyal and now hosts the podcast Mea Culpa with Michael Cohn. And he joins me now. Um, good to have you here. And I thought maybe we could start with you explaining um, what is, I think, to some folks, a new character in this tale. I know noted in your congressional testimony, you talked about Jeff McConney, the uh, the controller. But 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 who is he and what role does he play in the organization? So I guess the easiest way to explain it is to put it into an example. And that would be assuming that it's like um, a, a small bank. Donald Trump would be the president of the bank. Alan Weisselberg would be the branch manager and Jeff McConney would be the teller. Every single transaction that was done in and out ah. of any of the banking went through Jeff McConney. He worked specifically and directly for Alan Weisselberg. So that's that's interesting and sort of revealing insofar as like he is he's directly under Weisselberg. He's a direct report to Weisselberg. He's he's doing the sort of He's executing these sort of transactions, and so they're all coming by him, even though he's not the kind of authority signing off on them. Oh, that's correct. The only person that can sign off on any of that would be Donald himself, and it would come through Alan's desk, which is why I said that every single transaction went through Alan's desk, but they were then keyed in or out of the bank accounts through Jeff McConney. So we're watching this. I mean, what 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 went through your head when you saw that news about McConney and what it would mean both for Trump or but also specifically for Weisselberg? Yeah, it's not good news. It's not good news for Donald. It's not good news for the Trump organization. And it's definitively not good news for Alan Weisselberg. And here's the reason why everybody stays tough. You want to stay on message, which is what Donald is telling them to do until such time as they drop the bomb on you, meaning whether for me it was the SDNY, this case it'll be the district attorney or the attorney general, whether it's for Jeff McConney or for Alan Weisselberg. You see, the problem is that they have so much documentary evidence right now in their possession that no matter what lies you try to promote, it's, it's going to be met with resistance because there's documents that show the exact opposite. And of course, if you lie to them, then you're going to get hit with another violation and it's another crime. So things aren't re really looking very good for, you know, Trump, for Weisselberg or even Jeff McConney at this moment. Well, so, I mean, you're the one person in the world who probably has the best subjective access to the psychological experience of this particular squeeze. Right. I mean, they're they're kind of rerunning the play here. Um, and, and I just wonder what your what your like as we watch Alan Weisselberg there. And obviously he looks like a not a happy camper because he's being, you know, as a reporter asking him and the, the eyes of the world are on him. But just can you walk through what your own subjective experience of the feeling of that pressure was and how that moved your calculation decision making? Well, Chris, you have to remember I didn't have the luxury that they have, which is days and weeks and then months. Mine came on a Friday night at 5.30 p.m. with a demand that if I don't come in and plead guilty on a Monday, they were filing an 85-page indictment that was going to include my wife. Right. And I wasn't going to even risk any opportunity there. But they come with so much pressure. They come with so much force that no matter who you are, it makes no difference. You can't oppose it. And that's exactly the pressure that they're going to put on Weisselberg. So when people say, oh, Alan's not going to flip, Alan's not, this isn't about flipping, folks. This is about telling the truth. And the problem, like I said, and you used well, it in the clip, everybody lied for Donald. It wasn't just me. It was the entire right. company. It was Don Jr., Ivanka, Eric, Jared, you know, Alan, you name it. Um, the lawyers, everybody in the company lied for Donald because that's just the way the company operated. So now when you have somebody like Alan who's trying to clam up, it's not going to work because everybody around you is going to be forced to tell the truth and the truth does not inure to any of their benefit. That, that's, that's a great point and the point I was going to lead to, which is that you know, the pressure <laughs> works because the underlying conduct here, there's a, there's, it seems fairly systematic conduct here that is, you know, 
charitably in a gray area, charitably unethical, or perhaps actually a, a criminal. And I, you know, so that's right. I mean, that's the issue here is that the conduct it, within the records and how people are operating itself is is pretty problematic. Yes, of course, it's problematic. But remember, Donald was very smart in terms of listening to the one person I think his entire life he actually listened to all the time. And that was Roy Cohn when he said to Donald, make sure that you have no fingerprints on anything, which is why Donald never had an email yep. address. But then again, what's the big deal? The document is the document. And the fact that they sent it to me or they sent it to Rona Graf or they sent it to Alan Garten or to Alan Weisselberger, whoever in the company, it makes no difference. It's all about, hey, take this to Donald, ask him what he thinks. You would take it to Donald, he'd tell you what he thought, then you would do what he was. you were told to do to go see whoever else he needed to see. And that's how the transactions work there. Every single transaction from the acquisition of a pen all the way to the acquisition of a piece of property all had to be approved by Donald first. Let me ask you, uh, uh, I want to play this clip of Stormy Daniels who gave an interview. Uh, obviously, it was it was the payments to her that you were involved with, which was the kind of one of the things that you you pleaded guilty to in federal court that you were involved in that gave them the leverage they had. And uh, what she had to say today, take, take a listen. Have you been called to testify before this Manhattan grand jury? I have not been called to testify yet, but I've been very forthcoming since the beginning of all this that I would love nothing more than my day in court and to give a deposition and to provide whatever evidence that they need for me. What do you make of that? Oh, good for her. You know, she's entitled to her voice. She's entitled to be heard. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, I was watching today on throughout the day, social media attacking her based upon uh, her job, um, you know, and what she does for a living. And I'm not really sure I understand why people have to equate what she does for a living with being honest, telling the truth and providing, again, documentary evidence, which proves the truth of what the district attorney and the attorney general are looking to, you know, obtain. So I really don't understand that. Um, you may not like what she does, but that's neither here nor there when it comes to telling the truth. The information yeah. that she's looking to provide is backed up by not just other testimony, corroborating testimony, but also by documentary evidence. And so, the, you know, this is really now for the district attorney's office in conjunction with Tish James, the attorney general's office. This is all about them producing and conducting a investigation the way that they do. And I'm pretty certain that it's going to um, it's, it's going to not in order to the benefit of Trump, the Trump organization and many other individuals.